I bring you greetings from the Anglican Church of Rwanda, and more specifically greetings from our uh, Gasabo Diocese, which is the Metropolitan Diocese, which is the diocese that I'm responsible for, besides uh, being the Archbishop of the Anglican Church of Rwanda, but also uh, being the Chairman of GAFCON. So thank you for your partnership in the ministry. We have seen the growth. I remember four and a half years ago when I took over the Metropolitan Diocese, we were only 2,900 members in the whole diocese. Today we are over 7,000 people in the whole diocese. We had three parishes and what we call some parishes. We now have about 14 parishes and about uh, 26 local congregations. And I want to say that you have had a part in that because some of the churches we have built, you are part of, of the, uh, of the uh, you, you are partners in that. And some of the early childhood centers that have been catalysts in actually growing the church, you have also had a hand in building those uh, early childhood centers. And uh, we do have now 21 of them. So thank you very much for the partnership in the ministry. Thank you for what you have done for us. We thank God for you. I also wanted to say thank you for your willingness to share your rector, Dean Paul, with the greater community of believers with the GAFCON movement worldwide, this is touching over 80% or 85% of the Anglican communion. And so sharing Paul with us, allowing him and supporting him to be part of this ministry as our new general secretary, it was a blessing that comes from Christ Church Plano. So you should thank God also for being a part of this big movement. As we were in London and all the primates were there, and I was trying to share and tell them about, uh, about Paul because many of them uh, had seen him and they knew of him. So I was trying to describe him because he was not in the room when we were talking about him. And as I shared and I was talking, and I said, oh, remember the person who also shared the scripture in mem by memory in the GAFCON meeting? And one of them raised the hand and said, oh, the Bible man. <laughs> and that sealed it, that did it. Because everyone was saying, if this man can recite the scripture as he did during the global, the GAFCON meeting in Kigali, it only means that he spends time in the scripture. It only means that he reads the scripture. It only means that he feeds and nourishes himself from the word of God. And they said, oh, we don't need to know more than that. And we thank God that uh, he was elected general the next general secretary for GAFCON. So I pray that uh, you will support him. I pray that you will encourage him as he defends the stand for the gospel. I pray that uh, you will join in with the whole movement. I think you are aware you got the news that the Primate Council also requested the Anglican Church of North America to consecrate him as bishop for special missions. So we are looking forward to that time. Maybe I will get invited to be with you again as we consecrate him bishop of special missions in the near future. The mission of GAFCON is that of guarding the unchanging, transforming gospel of Jesus Christ and to proclaim it. You have done it. You continue to do it in this church. You continue to expand and grow. 
You continue to reach out in your outreach ministries. And that we want to see happen worldwide. GAFCON is a Bible-based movement, a movement that upholds the scripture as the stream authority that guides our lives and um, that we have to preach and we have to share with others. So, brothers and sisters, as I speak to you, what a joy for me especially, as we have partnered with us to also be thinking that I'm going to work with Paul, whom we have been partnering. No one knew that when he started working in Rwanda and, and, part, and you all started partnering with us, no one knew that this will come. So let me encourage you to be praying and supporting as you see fit and as God leads you. This morning, I wanted to share about two biblical figures that you know very well. I wanted to talk about Paul and his relationship and ministry and mentorship and partnership with Timothy. Paul the Apostle, a humble man, a man of a servant heart, a man of integrity, a man who never hesitated to share the gospel, preach the good news, no matter what was going to happen to him. I once heard that uh, fear is a uh, prayer, rather that courage is, a, is, a, is a fear that has said it's a prayer. I think Paul was a courageous man who had prayed, regardless of what was happening, the persecution, he was not afraid to move forward with the gospel. He was a man who wanted people to hear the gospel, to see the gospel preached all over, and to see people coming to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. It sounds like what Gafcon wants to see happen. It sounds like the mission of Gafcon to proclaim Christ and proclaim him unshamefully. The bottom line, Paul was about spreading the teaching of Jesus Christ. As we know and have heard, and many of us have come to Jesus Christ as our personal savior because of that gospel. Then we talk about Timothy. A young man, Paul met him on his second missionary journey and really liked him and found him to be an obedient young man who had been raised on the scripture. It was a trio. It was Paul, it was Timothy, it was Silas. Timothy had been ministering to the church in Ephesus for about four years by the time he got this message and this well-written letter from Paul. A man who learned scriptures at an early age. Maybe in some of the churches where he went, he also recited the scripture. Who knows? But he was one of those that was faithful that was trustworthy, a man who had become Paul's disciple, as Paul is seen he, as his mentor and his coach in their relationship. These two had a close relationship. In fact, in Philippians 2, verse 20, Paul says about Timothy that I have no one like him, which simply says that if he can stand and say, I have no one like him, it shows how much he had admired him, how much he had admired his faith, how much he had seen him as a servant of the Lord, how much his testimony meant so much to him, while others were deserting him, while others were abandoning him. But this one, 
Timothy got stuck with him. Timothy was caring, and the relationship was like that of a father and a son. I don't know about you, but I remember early days. If my father or one of my teachers came across and heard my shoulder, and if it was a teacher and just mentioned my name, you feel uplifted. The teacher knows my name. <laughs> the teacher remembered me among many. But this was not a teacher, this was Paul relating to Timothy. Though he was in prison, he was writing a letter, but he almost felt like he touched his shoulder and said, my son. And Timothy opened that letter and read it. My child, my son. That is very powerful. But also remember that Paul was in prison, and in this prison there were some hardships. He was suffering. He was paying the price of being a disciple, of being faithful, of preaching the gospel. And it was nearing or moving toward his death. And so he writes. It was like a farewell letter. It was like the last words of a father to Timothy. And I don't know in your culture, but I know in mine, when you have an elderly parent who is about to pass away, all the people get, get, gather around, and all they want to hear is the last words of this person who is about to go. And those words, normally when shared, are very are cherished. They are the last words. Sometimes it is addressed to the family to come together, to hold together, to love one another. Sometimes it addresses how things should be in the family. The last words in our culture are important. And if you happen not to have been there, people will say, oh, did he say anything or did she say anything? People want to hear. But here Paul gets an opportunity to put it on paper to his son. And he takes the paper and he writes, my son. I think as he was reading, he probably was looking and saying, so what is following? And in that same section, he says, be strong. I think he was still dying to hear what follows. He says, be strong. Last words in a letter from a person who is suffering persecution for what he believes in prison, about to die soon. I probably think that Timothy took this letter and kept it somewhere and it is written for us now. And we can read the same words, my child, my son, probably with tears as he wrote, be strong. And then he continues on to give a very clear mission. After saying, be strong. A very clear job description, if I can use that term. A bold statement. Probably words that he was waiting for. And he says, what you have heard from me, in that verse 2, in the presence of many witnesses. And he says, find some good men. Find some faithful people. Find some trustworthy people. Find some reliable people and entrust it to them. Thank God that many of you have come to accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. Thank God that many of you have been raised on the scriptures. Thank God that many of you have some good teaching from this church about the Bible. There are others who are not getting that. 
If anything, they are being misled. If anything, the Bible doesn't take the center anymore. The authority of Scripture has been pushed away. And Paul is saying, what you have heard from me. And what he had heard from him was nothing else except the teaching of Jesus Christ, the one who crucified, the one who rose, the one who is to come again. The one who transforms lives. The one the scripture says that when we receive him, we become a new creature. The old is gone. <laughs> the new has come. So he said that, keep it. Share it. And as you share it, let others also share it with those who can teach it. I had a professor in seminar, he used to say, when you read the test, he says, look for the big idea. And I think the big idea here is about multiplication. Paul had heard the gospel. Timmy has heard it. Now he's being challenged to look for faithful, trustworthy, reliable people he can share with. And those ones are also about to go and share that same message. Almost four generations. That's how we got where we are here today. And I want to challenge you this morning. As Paul challenged Timothy to look for faithful, trustworthy, reliable people, that what you have received, that Christ that you have known and you know, maybe there are people there during this season in your home or in your community that want to hear about Christ who changed you and who changed your life. Maybe beyond your community to the other nations. And I'm grateful that uh, you have been part of what we do because we have seen people who have come to Christ as a result of your ministry with us. Share that. Spread it. Proclaim it. For it transforms lives. Paul, in his final moment, as he gives a bold and clear statement of calling to Timothy, he just says, continue in the gospel proclamation. Continue in the sharing in what you have received and what you have heard. In other words, share it, but also leave it. It's very interesting that he didn't hide him, that by doing so, he will also suffer for it. He will pay the price of being a faithful servant, a faithful follower of Jesus Christ. And you even know it, even today, most of you in this church actually know it better because you sacrificed too much. Some of you had to leave your beautiful, beautiful church structures. Some of the pastors have to leave their passion. There was a price to pay. And if anything, we have learned it from SCNA. And that persecution continues. But I thank God for the bold step and decision that was taken at that moment. So Paul is asking Timothy to focus on a few things, maybe three priorities. One, nourishment from the Word of God. Keep it at the center. Feed from it. Teach it. Nurture people with it that will carry them and be a guidance to their lives. Two, train in godliness. Find those people that are trustworthy 
and train them to spread the gospel, to disciple others. Three, have a mission-minded approach to ministry. The mission-mindedness approach to ministry is that of multiplication. Timothy, who had been faithful and trustworthy, embarked on the call and the challenge that Paul had given him. We see no signs of him hesitating and saying, this is going to be very difficult. You have suffered for it, and I'm going to suffer, and therefore I'm not ready for it. Instead, I think he was ready because we don't see any reaction that says otherwise. I think he took Paul's words serious, especially since they were also the last words of a father figure. So you may be sitting and wondering what did Timothy hear from Paul that he said, what you have heard from me, teach it to others, well, nothing else but the gospel. Jesus and his teaching, his death and crucifixion, and the fact that he was coming back. Hope of the world. It was that that he was to entrust to other people, to faithful men who would pass it on also to others, the message of faith the preaching of the gospel, the message of repentance. In a simple way, proclamation of the gospel and discipleship. Timothy was an active member of the missionary team that Paul had put together, who had observed how Paul served, who had observed how Paul behaved, and who had observed his testimony and he had learned from his master and therefore ready and willing to go. I sometimes wonder if we are willing to go, if we are willing to knock on those doors of our neighbors to share Christ, if we are willing to distribute that portion of Scripture or the whole Scripture to them. Paul made sure that he told him about the cost he would face. And Timothy was willing to join in the suffering as Paul had requested him in chapter three, in verse three. But he also said, you need to endure. He encouraged him and shared with him that the Lord will give you and will give him insight into all things. He will give wisdom on how to deal with those issues that will come to him. And God still promises that he will be with us, regardless of the circumstances and the difficulties. In suffering, in persecutions, in anything, at any time, if we trust him and believe in him. Sometimes we may feel like he's a little distant, but he is there. And so Paul tends to give to Timothy some imageries of character or qualifications that sustains a faithful servant, that of a soldier, that of a farmer, that of Jesus Christ himself. And all of these have something in common because they require perseverance. They require patience. They require steadfast Endurance, they require dependency 
on God, and I think in that verse it talks about the grace. Paul wanted Timothy to be prepared and to prepare those whom he will train to persevere in the gospel, to remain loyal to the gospel, and that is the challenge that we have today. We are to remain loyal. We are to remain faithful. We are not to be ashamed to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. So the message from the letter Paul wrote to Timothy gives us some encouragement. Let us keep following Jesus, no matter the cost, no matter what. Let us maintain faith and hope and continue to be the guardian of faith. Let us raise up faithful leaders, faithful witnesses of Christ. Let us teach the good news of Jesus Christ to those who can teach it to others. And as I conclude, let me encourage you to be and remain strong in faith to focus on the being witnesses of Jesus Christ as opportunity arises, let us remind the people about Christ. Let us hand them scripture where we can. Let us be loyal to the cause that put him on the cross for your sins and my sins. Let us join in in proclaiming the good news of Jesus Christ through your prayers, through your support, through your going, and definitely through your support of your dean Paul, as this is part of the mission that he's also embarking on. Someone asked me, how much are you taking him away? This much you can't see, or this much? Let me say, we are not taking him away. But I want to thank you for your willingness to share. So if he gives us this much, that is what we will take. <laughs> and if you decide to give us this a little more much, that's what we will take. But more importantly is that he is not going anywhere. Staying with you and supporting this ministry through providing leadership to those that are involved and want to be part of the proclamation of the good news of Jesus Christ and shamefully to the world. And to that, we are committed. In the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. May God bless you.